She speaks. Good morning. What's up, amigos? How's it going? Happy Monday. Why is there always construction happening, but I never see it? We are doing it. We are getting it. Yes, that's my morning pep talk. But if you've never seen this before, my name is Greta. I live in New York City and I'm a UX designer. Something that I've tried to learn and perfect over the years is how I plan my day. So how I work as efficiently as possible throughout the day so that A, I get everything that I want to get done, done. And B, I'm not working late in the night because that's honestly like the worst thing for just your mental health. Doesn't give you that separation between home and work, especially if you work from home. So I thought I would take you along my day today and just show you how I get things done throughout the day. So little tips and tricks that I use throughout the day just so that I work more efficiently. The first thing that I wanted to talk about is how important it is for me to set myself up for success the day before or the night before. Something that really slows me down in the morning is having to make an entire breakfast. It honestly, I don't realize it all the time, but sometimes it can take me like 30 minutes to like make my eggs and like wash my fruit. So if I I can and if the type of breakfast that I want to have the next morning allows for this I will prepare it the night before so one of my favorite things is overnight oats I know not everyone likes cold oats I completely understand it can be a little a little weird but you can heat her up you can heat her up just letting you know something that I like to do the night before is prepare my overnight oats so this is super easy to make I just put it in a Jason J Jason I just put it in a mason jar and it's a half a cup of oats, half a cup of oat milk and like a spoon, heaping spoonful of Greek yogurt. And I just mix it all together. And if you want it a little bit sweeter, you can add maple syrup and then you just throw her in the fridge overnight and then you wake up and you have nice creamy oats. I like to put fruit on top. I'll put fruit. I'll put some chia seeds i love chia seeds they add like a good texture to it i just find that waking up and already having my breakfast prepared for me is just such a time saver does anyone else just wake up and you need food like right then and there like you need fuel that's what we're gonna do now we are gonna put some fruit on her we're gonna add some chia seeds i like to add some walnuts and maybe some almonds and it's just All right, so we are hydrated, we are fed. I just had my first meeting of the day, which was stand up with the developers on my team and the product manager on my team. Now I wanted to sit down with you while I have a little break in between meetings and talk about the planner that I use. This is the planner. I recently got the Hobonichi Techno planner, the cousin version. The cousin part of this planner just means that they give you two different planners. So the first planner is from January to June of this year and the second planner is from July to December. So it just makes it so that the planners are thinner because if it's from January to December, it can be quite thick. Now, if you've been following me for a while, if you know me, if you know me IRL, you know that I actually, I was a huge bullet journaler. I loved bullet journaling. This was something that I kept up with for three years. I loved bullet journaling. If you don't know what bullet journaling is, it's essentially when you get an empty journal, an empty notebook. This one is just a dotted, it's a dotted notebook and you can make your own planner. That's essentially what it is. People use bullet journaling for different things. Some people use it for creative journaling. I used it more as like a planner agenda 
for school, for work, for my day-to-day -day life, for tasks. So every single month I had a different theme and I got a lot of inspiration from Amanda Rach Lee. She's like one of the OG bullet journaler YouTubers. <laughs> and she does these videos where she sets up her bullet journal for the month. And I would get a lot of inspiration from her, but this is an example for September. I did like a koi fish theme. And the next page is usually your calendar. I would have my habits here, my habit tracker, a content planner. So the reason I stopped bullet journaling and the reason I switched to the Hobonichi is because it just took up so much time. And on Sundays, I would have to spend like up to an hour creating my weekly spreads. And then the second thing I felt is I wasn't sure if I was keeping up with it because it actually was helping me stay organized or if I just felt like it was more for, I don't want to say vanity, but just because I loved the way that it looked. I just felt like it was so beautiful and I would design it and I would put it together and I would share it on my Instagram and I was like, look, this is my bullet journal. There'd be times where I would do an entire weekly spread and I would spend so long setting it up and then I wouldn't really use it throughout the week. So it just felt like a waste of time. So I really wanted to try something new and I had heard a lot about the Hobonichi Techno Planners. The Hobonichi is a Japanese organizational planner. I really like that, you know, this is already set up for you. It's essentially the same thing that I would do in my bullet journal. And I just really wanted to see if saving the time of creating the bullet journal and creating my planner, if it would just make me more efficient. Let me give you a little tour of my Hobonichi planner. So in the first couple of pages, you have this calendar overview of the entire year so you it's nice because you have 2022 and you also have 2023 and the next page you have more of a daily view of every single month so you have a single line for every single day of each month and you can write major events that you have for that day after that you have more of a zoomed in view of every single month and this is really nice because you can write a little bit more detail on those events that you have and then we go to more of the hourly view of every single day. It starts from five in the morning and it goes all the way to four in the morning. If you're the type of person that enjoys planning their day hour by hour, which <laughs> I have been trying to do that, it is so hard. Going on to the next section, finally you are in the daily pages. So these are the pages that I use for the majority of every single day. This is where I write my daily tasks everything that I need to get done for that specific day. So I thought I would show you exactly how I set up my daily pages. Okay, but first let's talk about this pen that I'm using. This is the Pigma Micron 01 pen. Girl, I love this pen. I'll link it down below. But this is the first page of the daily pages for March and I use it kind of as a monthly overview. I took this from my bullet journal, so I used to do this and I still do it. So I have four different boxes, one for each area of my life. So that's work, life, side, hustle, and other. And I write down anything that I have to do at some point this month in each of these areas. So at some point, if I have like a project that I need to to complete this month I'll write that in my work box and then on my daily page on the next page I'll look through my monthly to do's and I'll pick from that list essentially from each of those four boxes what do I want to get done that day so as you can see on the daily page the left hand side you have the scheduler but at the top I have a highlights area the main things that I need to get done and then the other areas work life and other so the highlights are the things that non-negotiable I have to finish them that day but the other stuff I'll just look through my monthly pages and decide okay what from here do I want to get done today and that's basically it. So I'll just refer back to this first page of monthly to do's and decide what I want to get done from those lists today. So now that you saw how I set up my daily pages, that is essentially my Bible for the day. <laughs> I abide by this planner. Today, I need to finish some documentation on a new component that we are adding to our design system. If you're not in UX design or you're not in tech, you probably are like, what the hell is she talking about? So you can just ignore that part. <laughs> 
but that is my main task for today. So that is going to be my highlight. So what I no no negotiations. This is a non-negotiable task that I have to get done by the end of the day. If I am really feeling like I can get it done, then I will have two highlights for the day. And my second highlight for the day is literally to film this video. So I'm doing it right now. So that is great. Before I would make these huge to-do lists, 20 things that I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna get this done and then I'm gonna go get my laundry and then I'm gonna go get my nails done and then I'm gonna finish this project for work. And I would just get so overwhelmed by looking at my list that I would literally just be like, I don't know where to start. So highly recommend either having a highlight of the day or even within that list of things that you need to get done, you can always number them. So you can say this is priority number one, this is priority number two, this is prior priority number three. But for now, I have about five minutes before I'm gonna talk to my sister. So in these five minutes, I'm going to make my coffee. El cafecito is very importante. I actually just got an espresso machine, oh my god. She and I are just, we are soulmates. And it's also a beautiful day outside. I'm so happy about it. We love the sun, we love the vitamin D. Okay, let's go make my coffee. Day. So, things that I have checked off my Hobonichi planner so far. I started this video. Hey, girlfriend. I did my stretches in the morning. I ate my breakfast. I called my sister. I met with my manager. I Finished about half of the first highlight that I have listed here, finished design ops work. But another thing that I was gonna say that is really helpful for me while I'm actually working is something called the Pomodoro Method. The Pomodoro Method is basically a technique to keep you focused while you're working throughout the day, but it also allots time for breaks. You work for a specific amount of time, you set a timer, um, you can accommodate it to whatever works for you. So for me, I'll set a timer for 45 minutes and within those 45 minutes, I have to be working. I have to work, no breaks, no distractions, not being on my phone, not doing anything but what I allotted that time to do. And then once those 45 minutes are up, I set another timer for 15 minutes. 15 minutes can be a little too long for some people. Some people you know, only need 10 minutes of break, but those 15 minutes are for my break. So I will literally stand up. I make sure I stand up. I don't wanna take my break while I'm still sitting because I think it's good to stand up every hour or so. So I'll stand up for 15 minutes. Maybe I will like check to see if I have any messages. I'll go make a coffee if I want a coffee. After those 15 minutes, I come back to my desk and I set another timer for 45 minutes. And then the cycle repeats again, 45 minutes working, 15 minutes break. So it's almost like a hit workout, but for your brain. And along with like that whole theme of taking breaks, go outside if you can. I always make it a point to leave my apartment at least once in the day. Obviously, that doesn't always happen. Sometimes the day literally gets away from me and I realize like, oh my God, I have not left my apartment all day. Like that happens to me, that's very normal. But if I'm intentional with it, especially if I write it in my planner and I'll say, okay, I see that I have a break between 2.30 and three o'clock. I'm gonna go for a break at 2.35 and I'm gonna go for a 10 minute walk and then I'm gonna come back before my next meeting. It just, I don't know, it's almost like an appointment with yourself. Something that I really changed my perspective on is the way that I approach personal events. So what I mean by that is, for example, when I schedule in a walk throughout my day, I treat it as if I have a meeting or something. That is a non-movable, I cannot cancel it. I can't just decide last minute, oh, I don't feel like going for a walk. That is, I have to respect myself enough just as if I'm respecting a coworker who set a meeting on my schedule. And I'm not just gonna cancel on them, you know, like 10 minutes before, right? I'm not just gonna message them and be like, oh, actually, um, 
you know, I'm not actually in the mood to meet today, so sorry about that. Like, you wouldn't do that to a coworker, so girl, don't do that to yourself. You know, sometimes you have those meetings that you don't wanna to go to, and you go to it and you realize it wasn't that bad. So I feel like it's kind of like that. I literally have uh, 15 minutes before my next meeting. Let's go. Hey amigo, what's up? How are you doing? You see the sun shining on my face? Yeah, well that could be you, but you playing. So just put your shoes on, go outside, take a walk. Love you. Another meeting is done. It went really well. Had a team meeting-ish plus extra people with my product manager and my UX manager. And this is something that I feel like I'm gonna say it and then you're gonna be like, that is the, dumbest tip I've ever heard Greta. I don't know if this happens to you like you will write out your entire to-do list in the morning and it's ready to go and you know what you're gonna do and then you start all of the tasks that you need to do and you just forget about your planner like you don't look at it for the rest of the day you don't even open it to check what else you have to do you just kind of write it down and you have that list memorized in your brain but it's so nice to just check things off as you go so I especially with my bullet journal, and that's kind of why I stopped. I felt like I would just use it in the morning and then I would forget about it throughout the day. So something that I just got in the habit of doing is just opening it up and checking things off because it's satisfying, which is like the biggest reason I do it. It's satisfying and then also sometimes I do forget things if I don't look at my planner for the rest of the day. So if I'm looking at it, checking it here and there, it just makes sure that I'm not forgetting anything. Something else I wanna share with you is having a work log slash work diary. It's a place where you write down everything that you did throughout the week. When you wanna get promoted, it's really great to have access to this diary or this log because you can go back and you can look at literally everything that you ever did. And you can pull from this log and be like, look, I took leadership in this, in this situation. I spearheaded this project. It's also really nice just to like have a log of everything you did because if you forget what day you did something you can just go back to this log and you can be like oh yeah i did this on friday <sighs> i just wrapped up my last meeting of the day yes can i get an amen we can talk about productivity all day long right but if you're not in the right mental space then none of that matters. So something that's helped me with my, just my mental health in general, but also my productivity for the next day is to cut myself off at a certain time. I'm giving myself a cutoff time at 10 p.m. and at 10 p.m. I have to literally drop everything I'm doing. There's no point in just working yourself to the ground because then the next day, like sure, you might've gotten what you need to get done done, but if you keep doing that over time, it just affects your sleep, which affects the next day, which affects the next day. And it's literally just a cycle. So I find that just trying to get in the habit of just stopping my work at 10 p.m. every single day just makes such a difference. We have checked off our highlights for the day. So I'm very, very pleased about that. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me today during the work day. If you want to chat with me, if you want to see more of my life, follow me on the gram. I'm always on there. I'm literally always on Insta stories. I feel like my friends in real life are like, Greta, just shut up. I'm always on Insta stories, okay? That is it for me. I will see you in my next video. Bye, adios.